This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. If you're like me, the whole idea of cutting things and printing things with any sort of CNC just tickles your techno lust. And I got really excited watching Shannon's segment from the other week about uh, the printer bot. And I noticed it had a couple of issues. So Shannon, help me out here because I really want to get involved with this. I literally just plop this on your desk. Now we're printing sharks. You how did we get from did. there to here? So I had to build it. I had to put it together figure out how the software works, and then hopefully get all the calibration work working and make it actually print. This, but, this is a great real world scenario of somebody who like going is. from, I know nothing about 3D printers to, hey look, I have a exactly. shark. Exactly, I knew absolutely nothing like three weeks ago, and ever since we got this thing, I've just been delving into it, and I've learned so much just from reading the forums and you know figuring out the answers to all these different problems. And because you know printers in general, all the 3D printers that are available today, you have to build them from scratch and each one has different calibration issues and you know there might be a couple of different bolts and nuts other than what they have included in a normal group. You can, you so, can get pre-built ones, yeah, they're just more expensive. you can get pre-built ones, they're more expensive so you know the fun way to do it is to build it yourself. So you can run into some problems along the way. Luckily a lot of forum members and a lot of community, community members have tried to help you as much as they can. Okay, so are these some of the like, what you would say the most common troubleshooting yeah. and fixing kind so of things? So from my perspective, these were the most common issues that I ran into and these are the most common ones that I found whenever I got online and started looking through forum posts and trying to figure them out. So the first one that I ran into was the filament. So we are using the ABS filament, it's this, this nice plastic and it's only about three millimeters wide. My issue with this was that the first time I tried to print, it wasn't extracting down through the nozzle down here. So that little red piece right here and the little gold piece at the bottom, it wasn't extracting whatsoever. It had so many issues and I, I could try to squeeze it through physically and you know I still had problems, the gears weren't catching. So there were a couple of answers that I found to this issue. First off being check the gears on the top and clean out any excess filament that's inside the gears. So there's a extra gear on the inside down here and that is where it feeds it through. That's where it catches the ABS filament and mm -hmm. pulls it down into the nozzle. You want to make sure that there's no excess filament stuck in between in the oh, teeth. Oh, since it's going into the extruder, the extruder right. being the really, really hot thing. Yeah. There's potential for goopiness, is that the technical goopiness, term? Yeah, like goopiness, and it's kind of the same thing as like screwing a screw too tight and then losing all the threads. Oh yeah. That's basically the same issue that you would get if you have a whole bunch of plastic filaments stuck inside the teeth of the gear. So you want to clean that out with like a wire brush or uh, some tweezers or what have you, something small where you can get into the spaces. So that was the first problem that I had. And then you also want to make sure that the gears on the front of it as well are moving when it's supposed to be printing. So every time this is moving around, you can see that it's working now. You want to make sure that that works every single time. So next up, you want to check that your filament isn't getting caught somewhere. Maybe check the sizing and repeater. Make sure that if it is three millimeter uh, filament that you actually have it set as three millimeters in the software. Okay, so repeater is the software that you showed previously. Yeah. And exactly. Y because there's different, you said this is ABS, right? Yeah. But there's, and then also there's also PLA, PLA, and there's different sizes. You could get the two, two millimeter, the three millimeter, and each one, like, you have to set them to different sizes in the software, of course, or else it will try to squeeze through too much or too little and it'll get caught. So, how big is this? So, this is three millimeters. And what do you have the software set to? It's 2.75, so just okay. a little bit smaller. Just a little bit smaller, yeah. So that it melts to a smaller size and then gets down through the nozzle. Okay. So it finally worked for me. You also want to make sure your filament isn't caught anywhere. So right now I should probably put this onto a, a wheel or a wire or something so it doesn't get caught around the printer. But for you know example pur purposes of this segment, I just have it sitting over here in the corner. We're keeping an eye on it. Exactly. We're you won't run out of stuff, Sharky. You'll be okay. Yeah. So my little shark takes about an hour and 15 minutes to print. So I just left it running and I'm going to be here the whole time to make sure that it happens. You also want to make sure you do a press tint. Or a test print by heating up the um, filament to 230 degrees Celsius and then squeezing some filament out of the extruder. That's going to make sure that if there's any excess filament on the outside of the nozzle or any on the inside, you're going to squeeze it through and it'll end up coming out of the end and you'll pull out whatever 
crap is on the inside of it. That might be something you just need to do at the end of every print. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it'll help clean out your nozzle and it'll keep you from having any problems with it actually squeezing out. Now to clean it, this is where you might have to go out and buy something. So to clean it, you can remove the extruder nozzle on the bottom. The little gold piece you take off the tape on the top after it's cooled off yeah after it's cooled off don't try to touch <laughs> it with your hands it's really hot so you take off the red tape take off the little gold nozzle and then you can just clean it out with some uh, piano wire or some very thin wire just stick it through the hole make sure that there's nothing caught in there and you can also use acetone surprise surprise there we go yeah so that's what what we have here. Yes. And so what do you do? You just run this through it? Do you soak it? How, do you, how does so that work? So when I was using this, I decided to fill up a little, just a little Tupperware dish of acetone and then stick the nozzle in there and it cleaned off any excess gunk. It was awesome. It's, and it kind of cleaned off my nail polish at the same time. So don't Oops. make fun of me for having bad manicure. Well, it's wait. this fault. Well, can't you just use, if you don't have acetone, can't you just use your sister's nail polish? You probably shouldn't because they mix in a whole bunch of other stuff like food coloring, you know, to make give it that pretty purple color. And they mix in a lot of other stuff too, like the healthy, the stuff that keeps your nails hard and whatnot. So you want to use just regular acetone. That's the best for Okay, this. good deal. Yes, the hardcore printer geeks will get mad at me if I say use nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the biggest problem I had was the heat bed. It doesn't want to heat to 70 degrees Celsius. I had so many problems with this. This was the biggest case scenario for me whenever I was trying to print something on it because when I put it into Repeater, if it doesn't heat to 70 degrees and I hit, you know, save job or start job, it's not even going to start the job if I can't hit 70. So it'll hit like 66 degrees or it'll fall a little bit short and go down to 65 and it goes up and down and up and down. Hmm. It just wouldn't hit 70. And it was really ticking me off. So I keep. I took a, you know, uh, took a spin around the forums and yeah. basically the only thing I've found in that sense is, uh, well, the one thing I found was that people were saying buy a bigger power supply. I mean, what yeah. this is, this whole thing here is running off of PC power supply. You know, this yep, is what it. you would have in your ATX case PC power at home. Supply. It's crazy. Um, so I follow but this is a 200 and fit, or 350 watt. It's 350 watts. It should be perfectly fine for this kind of printer bot. And you can also do a couple of other things. There's a thermistor cable on the bottom of it. You want to make sure that that's um, directly on your heat bed. There's no kind of um, there's no separation or obstructions. I, apparently, you can also stick cork board or something else that has a thermal resistant underneath the print bed. So you end up having a little bit of insulation on the bottom here. Oh, right, because you're losing heat, heat out of the bottom right now. Exactly. Hmm. So we could put this inside some sort of bubble enclosure you could put it or something. In a box. Yeah, and that's why they sell a whole bunch of you know insulated boxes. For in fact, printers. that's what Dave Randolph does for yeah. the MakerBot. Is he has these like exactly. you know window things, <laughs> little window things. It's good stuff. So try a different power supply. Make sure the thermistor is working. You can also make sure your computer is reading the correct temperature with an external uh, temperature gun. So you can just oh, yeah. aim that with a laser and make sure that it's reading correctly. And those are pretty cheap, so you can buy them pretty, you know, pretty inexpensive. So is this just because you were trying to get pretty for the segment? <laughs> no. <laughs> so that was my third issue was the ABS, the, uh, the filament. It wasn't sticking to the print bed, so the filament would just kind of bunch up around the nozzle at the end. It would just kind of curve into a little circle. And that was also kind of ticking me off. But it turned out that had a couple of reasons to it. First off, the heat bed wasn't heating up to the right temperature and also it wasn't sticking to the nice flat surface of the glass or the plastic that you currently have on your heat bed. So you need to make sure you have something on it that is going to make it stick. Surprise, surprise, hairspray. Ah, hairspray and is And one of sticky. the cheapest hairsprays on the market. Sweet. So Aquanet Extra Super Hold. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. If you so, had a lighter, you could get a little I went off. a little bit hardcore with this. So first Flame off, thrower. I took blue painter's tape right here. I took blue painter's tape, I put that down first on a brand new uh, plastic surface on there. So I just taped it down just fine. And then after that, I took the Aquanet, and I sprayed that on there really good, went pretty hardcore with that. And then after that, I also made this thing called ABS Juice. ABS Juice. <laughs> oh, so this is, this is, if you can see it, it yeah. is acetone and a little piece of ABS filament. And about after 30 minutes or so, it dissolves into the ABS liquid. Oh, wonderful. And you can paint this onto your 
your <laughs> painter's tape. Oh, that's and it creates, cool. It creates a nice sticky surface yeah. that will mold your 3D printed model onto the surface. Because so it, won't have it any wants with to it stick to other ABS stuff exactly. and so you're just kind of glossing it over. Yeah, I'm just kind of glossing I it over that. and giving it an easier way to stick. So after I got all of that working, we finally were able to start printing Mr. Jaws, who was what I was trying to print about two weeks ago on the last episode of Hack This Hack's is Life. fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, so this takes about uh, an hour and 15 minutes to print. At the beginning, you can tell on the close-up that the layer, the border layer around here, it had some issues right there where it uh -huh. didn't print all the way. So it was coming up a little bit. So I just took a pair of very small pliers and I stuck it down there. And I kind of helped it along in, it for, in its first layer so that right. it would stick pretty well. And depending on what you're printing, you may end up going back and sanding this stuff yeah. anyway because you're not going to, you know, that's one of the, the biggest things that people say when they see 3D printed objects is it doesn't have that kind of smooth finish that you yeah. expect from, you know, other plastic Yeah, you can see stuff. the layers on it and that, that is an issue with a lot of 3D printers. But um, I believe there's one on the market that has It depends a on your expectation though. One. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't really... I don't really care if it's smooth or not. I just want to print things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, your shark is still going to be just as sharky. Exactly. I mean, it's great for Shark Week, which is coming up pretty soon. So oh. I'm kind of excited about that. Didn't need to tell everybody that. It's just saying. Shark, shark, shark. <laughs> well, hopefully this will be done by the end of the show. I can't wait. It's so awesome. cute. Sweet. Well, if you guys have questions on this stuff or if there's other uh, 3D printing uh, technologies, 3D printers you want Shannon to take a look at as well as, um, you know, just uh, other Ooh, tricks of the trade. What should I print next? Feedback at hack5.org. What yeah. should I print next, guys? I know. You could print a Hack 5 Hack Across America Challenge Ooh, Coin. But now I need to find out how to make a 3D model of the Hack 5 Challenge Coin. Oh, uh, well, with lasers and a webcam. <laughs> yes. Well, with that, stay tuned, uh, and we will see you guys after the break. You work in IT? I know I worked in IT. I know what it means. It means constantly jumping from one problem to the next and each issue needing to be resolved, like, right now! And every minute counts, you know? Don't waste your time juggling different tools and duplicating data entry. This is why I've been using GoToAssist from Citrix. They are the leader in remote support. And with their tools, you'll have everything you need in one integrated, easy to use platform so you can work faster and more efficiently. So get this, GoToAssist now includes three essential tools so you can have a completely custom you know, tool set for all of your needs. First of all, there's the service desk, which allows you to log those incidents and track those resolutions. There's GoToAssist monitoring, which proactively identifies issues so you can fix them before your boss calls in and be like, hey, you know, that thing is down. You don't want that. And remote support. You guys know I love the remote support. It provides live or unattended to any PC, Mac, or mobile devices from anywhere. I've been using it on my Android device for free. And get this, you can sign up for a special 30-day free trial. Just visit gotoassist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code HACK5. That's gotoassist.com, promo code HAK5. That just about wraps up this episode of HACK5, but before we get going, I want to uh, tell you guys about Hack Across America, obviously, yeah, what's going it on? for quite a bit now, and uh, there's so much more to get to, because we're done with the West Coast, we're heading east to uh, Las Vegas, and then we're going through Montana, so look out Helena, uh, we're going through Idaho, <laughs> so look out Boise, uh, cool. and then it's like Wyoming, Colorado, uh, I think Denver, uh, going to be down in Austin, awesome. Texas. So you're finally getting off the West Coast and making your it's way actually across America. Done hacking across I-5, yeah. <laughs> America, there's going to be quite a bit. Yeah, in fact, actually, mad props to Midnight Snake for being the first one to figure <gasps> he out. He did? Well, he's figured out part of the uh, the coin, which is really interesting because he's actually in Europe. <laughs> so. <laughs> how did he, wait, what? <laughs> so you go. How did he get a coin? You Brits, I don't know. <laughs> no That's idea. Awesome. But Midnight, uh, Midnight Snake is tweeting me with uh, using the cipher on the coin. So there's cool. there's that. That's awesome. Yeah. So this week we do not have a Hack Shop special of the week because we are gearing up for DEF CON and we're going to have plenty of specials at the convention. Oh my God, are I we? I think we'll have daily specials. It's going to be like a yeah, and you know what? Party. We should we should do something for the people that are at home that aren't able to come out to DEF CON. We should do a web special at the same yeah. time so that. While DEF CON's going right, on. Right, because you know, yeah. That's a good, good idea. 
Now you have to do it. And then you also, win. I was thinking, you know, since we're going to have all of this spare stuff left over from DEF CON, <laughs> we should just randomly like ship it to trees. people. Yeah, you might get a pineapple with a, you might get a palm tree with your what pineapple. It's world? just, let's just oh, do that. It's about to fin. Is it? There goes palm tree. It's about yeah. to finish. Is it? Yeah, it's, I'm it's got. I'm very excited about this. Well, this says zero seconds left. Job finished. It's done. That's it? Yay! It's been going the entire show. I finished my print. Okay, so now we have to figure out how to take it off. All right. <laughs> uh, Should I, I Google this part? Mm. Okay, so what I can do is... Well... I can move this up, and I can move... You're saying I shouldn't just pull this out and make it happen? Don't stab it, yeah, you say? Pull it up a little bit farther. <laughs> We're going to need a much bigger boat. Let's go... I guess I can't move those. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, there it goes. Okay. All right. I moved it around a bunch, so it might take a Oops. moment. Oops. <laughs> okay. okay, cool. <laughs> Wait, let me make it go forwards. Wrong way. Okay, there. Nice. <laughs> so, okay. go ahead. Does it just come just, off? I guess. I don't know. I've never done <laughs> one of these before. I'm more into like Should I just... laser cutters. Where's your knife? Well, my knife is here, but I don't want to get in on that bed. See, I heard you're not supposed to use pointy, sticky, mean things to pull your things off of the printer heat bed because we might have to wait for him to like bed. cool down. Well, it doesn't have to cool down because it's already hard. Oh yeah, it's super hard. So she said, "All right, well, let's let's." Ow! Hey, don't touch this. That's not what you want to touch. You know, I'm already on crutches. I think I've had enough for one episode. I think I'm just gonna peel off the tape. Okay. Eh, don't lick that. <laughs> I'm burned and it tastes like acetone. This is not good. Ew. This is so not good. Okay, I'm gonna peel it off. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get some water. And this oh. is why. <laughs> oh. oh. This is why Darren cannot have nice things. So I'll just peel this off. While Darren's getting his water. Ew. That's gross. Okay. Well. Here's my shark. Mm. So the bottom layer was the one that I was having some issues with and not sticking. But I figure if I just sand these off, I don't want to peel them off and end up peeling the entire thing apart. But I think I could just sand these apart with a nail file or something. Mm -hmm. And then um, give I'd, it a soft texture on the bottom. I'd say Otherwise, for your first pretty yeah, print job. Yeah, it's not bad. You know? I've seen much bar, worse than mine. <laughs> so I think after this, I would have to do a couple more calibration fixes, maybe mess with the temperature a little bit, and mm -hmm. maybe even mess with the Aquanet a little bit more. Spray some more on, or maybe a little less. <laughs> so it just takes, and you're drinking out of a beaker. Okay. So. <laughs> oh God, what is this? It was just sitting in the kitchen. I don't ah! know. It tastes nasty. Oh, I'm done nasty. with this episode. I'm, I'm Darren Kitchen. <laughs> I'm Shannon Morris. Send your feedback Just to, to feedback.org and check out hackshop.com for sales and stuff and <laughs> hackshop.org slash follow and hopefully Darren does die. What did again. they put in this? <laughs> Trust your technology. <laughs>